You own the IEO, which is up 2% today. Yeah. And this seems to be the prevailing story, at least at the moment, today. I've been talking about this on the show since July. I genuinely believe that oil is where the puck is going next and the oil-related stocks. Let's just talk about the XLE first because these are the bigger names uh, that have more market cap and that move the averages. You take a look at the XLE. It's the only positive sector in the whole market over the last month. It's up about 2%. In addition to which, every single component of the XLE is above its 50-day moving average. You cannot find that in any other S&P sector. And here's the funniest part. It is far and away the cheapest sector in the stock market. It's eight times earnings. I'd like you to contrast that with the tech sector. 34 times earnings. So not only do you have price action indicating a big breakout for oil in general, in addition, you're not overpaying for these stocks the way you normally would in a momentum-like trade. I'm in the IEO. These are one notch down in terms of market cap size from the XLE. They're domestic companies. They're producers of oil and natural gas. I think these stocks are about to rip. Shan, what about you? You like energy? Well, I think, you know, if you look at, to Josh's point, from a valuation perspective, we're in a lot better situation buying energy here. There's also the opportunity potentially for, you know, meaningful earnings growth if we go in the back half of next year, particularly with the supply-demand mismatch. I'm more concerned, frankly. I don't know that we want to see energy leading the market here, though, because that certainly, Josh and I were talking about this earlier, that certainly makes it much more difficult for the Fed, and we're coming into headline inflation tomorrow that's going to reflect these higher energy prices. So although you are seeing perhaps a more um, fundamental rotation to a part of the market that's not quite as overvalued as what we're seeing in technology, that doesn't necessarily bode well for the next couple of months if we see energy on top because it creates more hesitancy, perhaps, on, on the part of the Fed to be able to start to loosen policy. Okay, so let's pivot then um, to the other sector that matters a lot right now, and that's tech. And Liz, I come to you as we're waiting on this Apple event. As I said, we're less than an hour away at this point. New phones coming today, updates to AirPods and the watch. And it, it does come at an especially important time for, for the stock, the market, shareholders, etc. But what about for tech right now? What is this event today? mean in the overall picture just because of the weighting that Apple has in this market and in most people's portfolio. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're all aware that Apple is a huge player in everybody's portfolio, whether we want to admit it or not or whether we did it directly or not. Apple is such a sentiment trade for tech and really for individual investors everywhere. I mean, all of us sitting on the set have at least one Apple device on our person, right, and probably a couple more in our bag, and that's how most of America operates. So if Apple starts to falter, and, and last week was its toughest week, second toughest week, I think, this year. Second worst week of the year, stock's coming off. Remember, the stock was right. on the doorstep of 190. You look today, it's less than 176. Right. Yeah, so it, it doesn't feel good for investors. And when you couple that with what happened with NVIDIA last week as well, it, again, the sentiment trade kind of lost its luster. So I think the event today is important. I don't know that the event is going to necessarily send the stock in a completely different direction. There's still a lot of headwind on valuations. And watching the 10-year just continue this steady climb upward continues to put pressure on tech. And I think that this market is acting rationally for where yields are and where we are in the hiking cycle. So you see the stock. I mean, it's bouncing around a bit. 177, a little bit north of that. But again, Josh, we, we weren't but oh, 10 days ago talking about 190. Is this stock going to get back to its 52-week high? And yeah. here we are wondering, you know, where shares are going in the near term. Where's the company's growth rate overall going in the near term? Where are iPhone revenues which, you know, have been a, a question over the last couple of quarters. Yeah, I, look, I think there's two types of Apple phone launches. So we've now been through 14 of these cycles. Some of them, it's a giant leap forward technologically, where there's some feature that people are really excited about. In this particular case, this is the other type of launch, almost like a caretaker, like, yes, we would do with a new model, but this one is not going to uh, really change the demand picture so much. This is not the type of phone that all of a sudden people are going to say, well, that has new features no one else has. I have to have it, which is fine because this is now basically a replacement cycle product. Well, not many of their phones that come out actually have those features that nobody else has. They just have had this knack Best of version. doing it better than That's anybody right. else has done before. And now you've gone through this period. You're post-COVID now. People might be, you know, ripe for an upgrade. And that's what they're banking on in their most important quarters of the year, this and especially the December quarter. I think if, if, if it's, if it's going to be the type of launch where we capture some of it in this quarter and then most in the fourth quarter, which I think, by the way, is by design, 
Uh, but if that's what ends up happening, it's going to be a minute before we really get a sense of whether or not this was a quote-unquote um, good model upgrade or so-so model upgrade.